Apple just shocked the world by announcing the M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max chips all at the same time in a suite of brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And yes, they finally ditched that outdated 13 inch MacBook Pro design and gave us something that's actually much better than I expected, which I'll explain in just a minute. But all of this makes it much more difficult to choose the right new MacBook Pro in late 2023, especially especially with the downgraded M3 Pro chip. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out precisely everything that's new, and I promise you're gonna know exactly which model to buy by the end of this video, so let's jump right into it. First of all, the general design of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro hasn't changed one bit, except that you can now finally get the 14 inch design with the consumer M3 chip at only $1,600 instead of having to pay $2,000 like we did previously. And for both of the high-end models, we finally have a space black finish that officially replaces the space gray using a brand new anodization process that's meant to stop fingerprints. And this color alone is really tempting me into upgrading, even though I know I don't need to. Now, as far as the features, everything's basically the same, except for the fact that Apple slightly bumped up the standard brightness of the displays to 600 nits compared to 500. So it's gonna be a bit brighter for regular use, including web browsing, but the maximum brightness isn't changing at all. And to my surprise or literal shock, the base 14 inch model comes with the same liquid retina XDR display, including the same 600 nits of brightness and the same 120 hertz ProMotion technology. I legitimately expected Apple to tone those features down for the base model, but they didn't. Huge bravo. It's also got the same 1080p webcam, the same six speaker sound system, the studio quality mics, and Wi-Fi 6E in Bluetooth 5.3 specs. In fact, I only found four major differences, with one of them being the loss of the Thunderbolt 4 ports that the high-end 14-inch model has, which makes sense. For the second difference, the base M3 model still has a limitation of only supporting one external display compared to two on the M3 Pro and four on the M3 Max, even though the M3 has the HDMI port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. It still only supports one external display. For number three, it only has a single fan for cooling because honestly, that's all the regular M3 chip really needs. And for the fourth difference, the base M3 14-inch MacBook Pro has a slightly smaller battery at 70 watt hours instead of 72.4, but because of the low power usage M3 chip, it actually gets better battery life at 15 hours of wireless web compared to 12 on the M3 Pro version of the 14 inch and 22 hours of Apple TV app movie playback instead of 18, basically matching the battery life of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now as for the 14 and 16 inch high end MacBook Pros, everything has stayed the same feature wise other than what I've already mentioned, except that Apple also talked about a new advanced thermal architecture, so the cooling should hopefully be a lot better. And now before I get into explaining which one you should buy, I've got to talk about the chip differences and Apple's sneaky pricing changes this year. The M3 chip has the same eight core layout as the M2, using four performance cores and four efficiency cores for the CPU, as well as 10 GPU cores. And to my surprise, it gets all of the new GPU features, including the new mesh shader architecture, ray tracing, and the brand new dynamic caching feature. The M3 model also comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD standard, which means that you finally get two NAND flash chips, which will finally solve the huge single NAND chip performance issues that we had last year on the base M2 Max. Now moving on to the M3 Pro chip, this one is really weird because it actually got downgraded in more ways than one compared to the previous M2 Pro. First of all, the M3 Pro has 37 billion transistors, a downgrade from 40 billion on the M2 Pro. This likely helps Apple save costs and improve yields on the expensive three nanometer wafers from TSMC so that they can keep the price at the same $19.99. However, in order to do that, they actually had to also downgrade the core layout. 
Yes, it still has up to 12 CPU cores, but they took away two of the very important performance cores and swapped them out for another two E cores. So instead of getting eight performance cores and four efficiency like we had on the M2 Pro, we now only get six performance and we get six efficiency. On Apple's M3 Pro chip slide, they mentioned the M3 Pro is 20% faster than the first generation M1 Pro chip. The M2 Pro was already 20% faster than the M1 Pro, so there's basically no improvement. Making it even worse, the base M3 Pro now comes with a 14 core binned GPU compared to 16 on the previous M2, so they took away two GPU cores. And then when you pay to upgrade to the fully unbinned chip, you only get 18 GPU cores compared to the previous 19 cores, another downgrade. But wait, it actually gets worse because the M3 Pro has less memory bandwidth compared to the M2 Pro. Only 150 gigabytes per second compared to the previous 200 gigabytes per second. This is because they have apparently switched to using a setup of three memory modules on the M3 Pro compared to four modules on the previous M2 Pro. But at least that meant that we got a silent upgrade to 18 gigabytes of RAM in the form of three six gigabyte memory modules instead of the previous 16 gigs of RAM. Those are all very weird choices, but my only guess is that Apple realized that they previously made the mistake in making the Pro chip so close in performance to the Max chip, and now they're downgrading it to make the Max look even better. And now with that said, we finally have the new M3 Max chip, where Apple absolutely pulled out all of the stops and made it better than I expected. Instead of getting downgraded, Apple has actually given it a massive 16 core CPU with the same four efficiency cores, but up to 12 performance cores, which is absolutely bonkers. The only downside is that unlike last year, where you got the full 12 core CPU on any M3 Max model, the base model doesn't get the full 16 core CPU. It instead gets a binned 14 core CPU and actually the same binned 30 core GPU as on the M2 Max. But for $300 more, you can upgrade it to the fully unbinned 16 core CPU and 14 core GPU, right? Well, no, because you're actually forced into upgrading to 48 gigs of RAM if you want the best M3 Max chip, so that's a huge instant $500 upgrade. But the nice thing is that if you're not planning on that upgrade, they're now giving the base model 36 gigs of RAM instead of 32, which is a nice little bonus. But now with all that said, let me get into the buyer's guide portion of this video. Let's start with the new base M3 14 inch MacBook Pro, which I believe is an absolutely killer value for $1,600. It comes with the new 14 inch redesign with those nice curved edges, the additional HDMI port, the SD card slot, MagSafe 3 for charging, and the mini LED display with no downgrades compared to the high-end models, which blew my mind. And making it even better, it's only $100 more than the old outdated M2 MacBook Pro when you factor in the fact that it has an upgraded 512 gig SSD at the base price. So in my opinion, if you don't need the performance of the M3 Pro or Max, which I would argue 80% of people don't, then seriously just buy the M3 14 inch MacBook Pro model and you're gonna be happy. Now moving on to the 14 inch M3 Pro model, this is the one that really disappointed me with all of those chip downgrades. And for this one, you should honestly only buy it over the regular M3 model for three reasons. Number one is if you really want that new space black finish. Number two is if you really want more performance, seeing as the M3 Pro gets 11 CPU cores and instead of eight and 14 GPU cores instead of 10 at the base price with available upgrades. And number three is if eight gigs of RAM isn't enough for you on the base M3 model and you were gonna upgrade to 16 gigs, which brings the price up to $1,800, making it cost only $200 less than the M3 Pro version, which actually gets 18 gigs of RAM and a lot of the performance improvements as well as the additional 
fan, Thunderbolt port, and support for another external display. But if none of those things matter that much to you, then seriously just get the M3 14 inch MacBook Pro model. Now the only other reason to get the M3 Pro chip is if you really want the 16 inch MacBook Pro size, which comes base with the unbanned 12 core M3 Pro chip for $2,500. But let me tell you, the M3 Max is truly the one that you want to buy this year if you care about value and performance and if you can afford it, regardless of whether it's in the 14 inch or 16 inch size. It just got such a huge upgrade to the CPU and GPU that it's actually worth the upgrade, especially the fully loaded 16 core CPU model. However, the only issue with the base M3 Max chip model is that it now comes binned with only 14 CPU cores, so only an extra two performance cores compared to last year's M2 Max. So if you want the full M3 Max, Max, you've got to pay that $500 upgrade, which gets very expensive. So my advice is that this is only for those who want to go all out and get the absolute most performance in a laptop. This is for people who have complex CPU workloads or tasks that actually make them money in terms of their small business work or whatever else, especially if you can get a business write-off for it. It's also for those who want the absolute best graphics performance for things like Blender rendering or gaming, especially thanks to ray tracing and the other GPU improvements. But honestly, I'd like to mention again that the regular M3 chip is more than good enough for most people out there doing common work, so don't spend your money if you don't have to, especially in this economy. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this buyer's guide and if you have any further questions or you need purchasing advice let me know down in the comment section below and if you're struggling with the question of if you should upgrade or not check out that video over there and subscribe for our in-depth testing videos next week thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video